are you with Art Rages? Thank you for joining us on this amazing Thursday. It's beautiful and sunny out here in New Mexico, and we are turning isolation into inspiration with drawing, and I can't wait for this class. Come. Without further ado, I'm super excited about this class. Sophia! Woohoo! Hello everybody! I'm so glad you are joining us today to draw because I love drawing and I love that you are sharing this experience with us. So today we are talking about negative space and positive space, but just how to observe really because one facet of drawing is that most artists or anybody in general, since I think you are all artists, draw what they know and not what they see. So negative space and what we're going to do today is an activity to help you observe more accurately, um, you know, just add a tool in your tool belt to your art abilities. So without further ado, da -da -da -da, negative space. So we will be drawing this very fun little plant in a pot. And what I want to tell you about negative space is that what we consider to be the object in the image, so in this case, the pot and the plant, is what we call positive space. So whatever your object is, your subject matter in the composition, that is your positive space. And everything around it is the negative space. And for simplicity, this negative space is extremely simplified. It's just the flat white background, um, but that's not always the case. So. To illustrate an example is this fun optical illusion. And this can go both ways, which is really fun. So the negative space can be the white in the middle and the positive space could be the people's faces. But if you focus on the vase in between them instead, that would be considered the positive space and the background, which is the black or the faces, would become the negative space. So this one goes both ways. But what we're going to do today is create sort of a half and half where we're drawing half the negative space and half positive space on our image. So this is kind of an example of where we're going. So we will draw a line down the middle and wait to do that because I'll, we're going to angle it slightly. And over here, they've drawn the negative space. So what that means is instead of looking at this left portion and thinking, okay, I'm drawing the leaf you're looking at the left portion and thinking, okay, wherever the black line is, I'm drawing this weird shape. So there's like a triangle that goes in, a flat squiggly line, a straight line down. So you're not thinking, oh, I'm drawing the bottom of a leaf, but you're actually thinking, how do I describe this black area that is surrounding the leaves? And then on the positive space side, we're gonna draw the actual leaves. So without further ado, we will start. Hopefully you've all downloaded this image and you have it open so that you can follow along. Now you don't have to do this step, but just because it's printed for reference, I'm gonna show you what we're going to do. So I'm just gonna draw a line right down the middle of this and slightly angled because I want the middle of the plant and the middle of the owl's beak, just because. And everything on the left is going to be the negative space, drawing. So we're going to look at drawing the background and then on this side it will be the positive space. So on this side we'll actually draw the owl and the leaves. So for you at home all you need is something straight and your pencil and you're going to lightly draw that angle on your page. I don't know if you can see this because it's very faint on my page, um, but you just want to use that as a guide. And then when you're starting, we're going to start on the negative side. So I'm thinking about drawing what has printed as kind of this light bluish green. And so we're going to draw these shapes as the outline. Okay, so first to start, it comes down a little bit, it goes up to the point. It's kind of curved as it comes down again and then comes up not as high as the first one 
And then again, curves comes down, goes over, now at an angle, comes back a ways, and this point is lower than this point, so we're gradually going down the plant. And then it's gonna kind of swoop in quite a bit, and then we've got this line there, um, coming not quite as far as this point, coming down, scooping up, and coming in quite a ways, all the way to a bit past this shape, and down again. And now we're getting close to the pot. We have a tiny little bit of negative space right in here. And then it starts the pot. And then there's one little spiky leaf coming out from the pot. And then it rounds down and comes down quite a bit. Okay. So I am satisfied with that for my negative space drawing side. And you can come back in here and start shading in the negative space, which I'm just gonna demonstrate really quick. And you can keep going with that on your own and make it as dark as you like. You could do it in a color. Um, you could do it in multiple colors, whatever you feel inspired to do. Um, and the more you darken it or the more value there is, the more you shade it, the more contrast it's gonna be and the more it's gonna pop out on the page. So on the other side, we're going to draw what we consider the positive space or the object. So I'm gonna start down here and I'm going to draw this little owl pot, making sure that it is coming up to the same height on both sides. Now I've made this owl pot much wider on my drawing than in the actual pot, but that is okay. And coming down here, and then we'll start the plant. So with this, it's just an activity in really different ways of observing because now that you've done this negative space side, you can kind of rethink how you are observing these leaves because previously you might think, okay, I'm drawing this leaf here and I'm just focused on that. But the hopes in doing negative space drawings is you're going to then also think, not only are you drawing this leaf, but what is its relationship to the space in the drawing and to the background? So rather than thinking, okay, I'm gonna draw this leaf in isolation and, actually, and then into this one, I'm actually thinking about, you know, what does this negative space shape look like? And that's going to help draw the leaves in relation to each other more accurately because otherwise it's easier to draw things not in the right spot, basically. Okay, and then I'm gonna add this leaf in the middle and this one connects to that one. And then we've got the top of it, got another leaf coming out of there and this one starts touching that one and now we start going up towards the top of the plant. All right, and we're almost done with the outline. And there we go. All right. So that is the basic outline of the plant. I'm gonna draw kind of where the leaf curls up on these front ones because we're able to see that. And then you can come back in and shade this and make it more realistic if you want. 
can add some really dark darks for the um, dirt at the bottom. And the more darks you put over here, the more darks you are going to want to put in the positive space on this side, and that's going to help balance your composition. So I'm just going to shade this quickly just to demonstrate where it might go. Okay. And this one has some shading under here. And then some fun shadows up here. So I'm using quite a dark pencil right now. I've got a 6B just so it shows up on the page better um, for the purposes of video. But if I were doing this not on a live video, I would start with a lighter pencil. So that might be your HB, it might be your H's. If you are drawing from home with just your regular school pencil, you're probably using an HB pencil. And what that means is it's not going to go as dark as easily as this pencil. Like I don't have to push very hard and I get really dark darks, which is great. Um, but for the sake of starting out, especially if you are a beginner drawing drawer, you will want to start out with lighter pencils because it's gonna be much easier to erase. And then once you're satisfied with your basic outline, that's when you can start pushing harder, practice your, um, you know, muscle memory control over how hard you're pressing, or if you have a full pencil set, you can start switching to those darker pencils and add in that nice contrast that's going to help it pop. Okay, now for the owl, best part, I love owls. And the owl, because it is a smoother object, and it doesn't have these hard edges. It's actually just really shading with the side of your pencil more than drawing with the tip of your pencil. And that's, again, going to help it give it that more realistic feel of a ceramic smooth round pot. So I'm just going to come in here, add a little bit of shading and keeping it pretty loose. I can come back in and define shapes more afterwards. I might use the tip of my pencil to define some of these feathers down here. Um, it's a little wing. And start placing that eye. And okay, now I'm satisfied with where that is. And I'm going to come back in and draw some much darker darks. Again, to push the contrast and make it pop a bit more. And some fun details in the eyes. And shape that side in a little bit more. We'll come back in with my eraser and get some of those circle shapes corrected. There we go. Happy with that. And, and I'm going to come back in, add some of the feathers down here. And finally, smooth this out, darken this bit. And there we have it. And for the sake of it, you can always draw that if you like as well, just to you know, add a little bit more detail on this side, just because, and balance it out. So if you were fully finishing this in, you can shade this negative space that's down here and keep shading that in, shading up here, until your composition is a little bit more balanced with darks on that side and darks on the positive side. And there, is this week's drawing activity, exploring negative and positive space. Now, the fun part of this is how do you apply it to all of your other drawings, whether it's portraits or landscapes or, you know, drawing your cat who's sleeping on the couch. Whatever it is, start thinking about what is the negative space around the object? 
what you can even name the shapes like you could call this wavy triangle or w's or whatever you need to name them you can give them imaginative names like flying flower i don't know um but i actually do this this is why i'm suggesting it is you kind of need to name them to categorize them to think okay the shape looks like that and hopefully it helps you draw some more realistic compositions and have lots of fun. Yay, that was so much fun. And you know, like with Outrageous, the portraits we do live on stage, we use a lot of negative space. And like you were saying, like I totally named the shapes. Like- um, What's one of your funnest names that you've come Well, of? some of them really remind me of like land masses, like Africa or oh, yes. you know, Florida, uh, you know, different things like that. Um, I've also seen like a fish or a dolphin or things, you know, yes. like for parts of eyes and things like that. So yeah, definitely naming your little shapes really helps. And also in terms of like doing painting for outrageous, it just helps you also know like the, the order you do it in. Like mm -hmm. first I do the heart and then I do the Africa and things like that. So yeah, I totally relate to that. That's awesome. And thanks so much for doing it and, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Be safe, be happy and vibrant. See you tomorrow. Bye.